end, yeah. end up in terms of, of, of regulations and standards, you know, right. national competent authority, right? If you think about where countries are on this, you've got a couple of countries at one end of the spectrum, like um, uh, China or Egypt, uh, Qatar, uh, I think Morocco, and, and at one stage India, who, who were basically very close to or, or had banned holding uh, 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 crypto assets. And you can go all the way over to, let's say, Europe, which in, 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 in my case is putting in place a bespoke regime to deal with this. And in between, you've got lots of countries that are in lots of different positions. So what we then try to do with countries after we develop a set of standards like this, and what we'll be trying to do next year with jurisdictions is to get into a dialogue and a conversation with them. So to get them to assess themselves against our standards, the IMF does assessments of, of large countries as well, and they would look to our standards and, and so on. Just try to get them to think about where are we, where are those gaps? And how long would it take us? Because the, the length of the legislative process is a really big issue for in, in a lot of countries. So if you look at, I don't know, the UK has changed the law recently, for example, in relation to marketing of crypto. How long did that take and what happens next? There's a big cycle there on how to fix things. So we like to then work with them in a, in a dialogue and try to get them all up to where we are. And sometimes they kind of need us to tap them on the shoulder and say, mm, you're, you're still falling a bit short and, uh, uh, and, and try to get them, get them there. But when you have such variety in how people want to respond to crypto, from, from, from people wanting to ban it, to people wanting to develop bespoke regimes, some jurisdictions would like to become centers for, for crypto innovation. You've got all those different views, then you have to uh, have a lot of conversations with a lot of people, countries that have different goals and objectives in order to try to get these common standards in place. I don't think we'll get to really good common global practices and approaches for a good few years yet. It will take time for all this to sift down into the individual jurisdictions. It's a hard struggle to get this done, but uh, I'm, but you know, you've got to take it one step at a time and actually us articulating the principles is just the first step. Yeah, well, here I have a, a, a follow-up question. Like, what challenges you see as the most important ones, like the most pressing ones right now in regulating and in designing these uh, uh, frameworks for DeFi regulation? I, it won't surprise you if I say it's the it's the crypto trading platforms are the big regulatory challenge at the moment. In in the sense of the volume of DeFi is really interesting because the volume of DeFi has gone down, but it's still there. There's still people trying to innovate in that space. Um, and I think there's a lot more to come in that space. But in terms of urgency for regulators, it, you ask yourself, where are people losing the most money? Where is the, the real potential for loss? And that's what you focus on. And it's these platforms which have combined lots of functions that used to be kept separate you think about a traditional stock exchange they don't trade against their own uh, their own clients uh, <laughs> traditional stock exchange but on these platforms well, uh, would they describe themselves as trading against they'd probably try to describe themselves as trading with uh, their their own clients but you know what i think many of them are possibly trading against their own clients and that's something you've just got to say no this is not okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 